Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the South San ISD Facebook Live community meeting. We hope to have a really great, meaningful conversation about the future of our district, where we're going, what opportunities you, you would like us to provide for your children. We have a lot of exciting plans in store for our students, and we want to keep adding more. And we would like you, the parents, grandparents, family members, to help us craft that future. Essentially, we want to seize the future together. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means and how we can accomplish it. We have some of our district leaders on hand to go into more detail. But before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you will be able to view this Facebook Live hours after it ends. If you have any friends or family members that missed it, please have them check it out. This will remain on our Facebook page for several days, weeks to come. Also, we really want to try and stay on topic tonight. So if there's a topic or a question that we don't get to, please email all of those to news at southsandisd.net. So without further ado, let's get started. Please welcome the man who is always taking care of business, Superintendent of School, Dr. Mark Quigg. Well, thank you, Jenny Collier, for that warm welcome. Hello, South San ISD family. We are honored and privileged and thrilled and excited to join you tonight virtually and have a community conversation about really shaping the future, as Ms. Collier said, for our children, our most precious resource. Now, tonight, joining us on the call, uh, we have our board president, Mr. Gilbert Rodriguez. How are you doing, Mr. Rodriguez? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, South San community. Thank you for joining us. Uh, taking some time out of your of your schedule to have a conversation with us. So thank you for participating. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Also joining us is our Deputy of Innovation and Transformation, Mrs. Sendejo. How are you doing this evening? Good evening, Superintendent Poig. Great, great to be here this evening. Buenas noches a todos. Welcome. And again, great to be here with you this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Sendejo. Also joining us is our Chief Academic Officer, Ms. Sedevion. Ms. Sedevion, how are you? Well, we're doing well. It was a long, productive day for South San, and welcome, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Sedevion. Now, Ms. Collier, real, real quick, Jenny, I know we have some folks working in the back. Is Carlos back there? How is he doing? Yes, I did not want to forget about Carlos. We're using this new app that we hope to use many more days to come, um, but he's in the driver's seat. So any mistakes that happen, it's on Mr. Carlos Rodriguez. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> uh, really, uh, before we dive into the uh, what I'm going to call a dreaming session tonight, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the COVID situation in our community and what the district is doing about that and what we've done since October 8th, when we came back into in-person instruction. And I wanna be really clear with our parents and our teachers and our staff that are listening tonight. Number one, I am amazed at the effort of Nurse Olivo who works here. Nurse, Nurse Olivo is our medical expert and she's done a phenomenal job in really working in collaboration with the Metro Health officials and ensuring that every time we've had uh, a positive case, doing the contact tracing in a methodical way, following a very rigid decision-making framework to ensure we make the right decisions about who and, and who to notify and how to quarantine and how to cancel events or proceed with events. Nurse Oliva, I just want to lift her up. Uh, she's done a great job. And also um, just our teachers and our leaders, our principals, and working in concert with parents and our students uh, it has been a collaborative effort to do our part to recover from this virus and to do our part globally to ensure that we mitigate and contain this virus. And that's a huge effort. And we need to be honest tonight. We want an authentic conversation about what's happening, how you feel. And the, the virus has caused a lot of division in our nation. And we know this. And it's at a time when we need unity and we need unity for our future right here in South San. We need everyone on this call to come together for the sake of our children. That's what's at stake is their future. And so in spite of the challenges, it is yes, unquestionable, the most challenging time, at least in my generation that we're facing, that's more the reason for us to come together. Even when we have differences, we have differences about how we handle this COVID and how we handle that situation. We have to come together because I can assure you, myself in concert with our amazing school board that is so focused on safety, we are doing really four things to ensure 
that we are doing our part, our moral, taking our moral responsibility in mitigating this virus. And I can tell you this, number one, there has been zero spread from within, zero spread. So any of the positive cases that we have reported to parents have come from the outside. And that's big, zero spread internally. So again, um, whenever we get a positive case, we notify the parents, the contact trace, that's coming from the outside. And so really uh, for nothing to originate internally speaks to all of the methodical protocols that have been put in place weeks ago. So I wanna give credit again to Mrs. Sendejo, your leadership team, uh, Chad Dusted with purchasing and, and folks that have really pulled all the necessary equipment to ensure those protocols were in place. But then to the leadership and our teachers who have executed those protocols, it's not perfect. Uh, I mean, families, uh, good people, we're, we're not, we're far from, we know we've made mistakes and we're trying. And so we just want to ask for your grace and your patience as we, as we continue to work through this. And I think number two, with respect to COVID, what we have done is really focused on keeping that in-person instruction to a manageable level. And so we've kept that number anywhere from 25 to 30 percent. And you may recall when we came back to school in person in phase one, uh, October 8th, Maso Menos, right in there, we, we brought back the most academically fragile kiddos. And even when the data said, hey, we're green, it's time to bring more kids back. We were saying, you know what, let's put our people first and lead with data. And we watched the data and it went backwards again. So we kept in phase one while some of our neighbors, they've made different choices and that's okay. They've gone up to 60, 70, 80%. They've stayed in those, in those zones. And that, that was their choice and that's okay. We've just taken a very measured methodical approach in keeping our students, our staff and our broader community safe. And I'd say the third piece of that, good people, is, um, you know, we've really been committed to doing testing on site. And so our school board was just excited to partner and approve the partnership with a community labs, a, a nonprofit that is committed to making San Antonio the safest city in America. And so we started small at South San High School and expanded PCR testing, which is really the, the gold standard and expanded that to the high school and all of the athletes. And then this week, Mrs. Sandejo, I believe, we started ex the expansion to uh, yes, sir. Yes, to uh, all the high schools. So we added West Campus High School and all the middle schools. And we know the fact that we are taking this approach to testing reduces the risk because we find out real quick if there are any potential spreaders. And I'd say the fourth component, um, Families, as, as you listen tonight and, and we come to you with a, with a heart of safety and trying to take care of our kiddos is this, we are allowing parents the flexibility. If you say, mira, mijo, we want you to learn from home. We don't want you in person. You have that option. So we're giving parents the flexibility. And that's, that's, that's our commitment to our families and our broader community that we wanna do everything we can with balancing the need for learning, but also maintaining safety. And I know we still have a lot of good work to do and getting better, but we are doing everything we can. So please know that. So I wanted to speak to that safety piece. Uh, Mrs. Sendejo or anyone else on the team, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, you want to add anything to, to our COVID situation? Superintendent Poig, again, good evening. Yes, thank you, uh, sir, for sharing just the unity behind uh, what we continue to do. Yesterday was a very successful day for us with Community Labs Partnership. And uh, just the welcome from the campuses and our students, our parents, and our staff just feeling very appreciative of having that opportunity to receive the testing at their campuses was very important. I see uh, la señora Cruz, muchísimas gracias. Sí sabemos que todo lo que estamos haciendo es muy importante con el riesgo que tenemos ahorita en nuestros, nuestras escuelas. Uh, y continuaremos uh, con esa consistencia uh, durante estos meses y es muy importante. Gracias por la voz de nuestros padres que están con nosotros esta, esta noche y vamos a seguir con los exámenes y la comunicación para todos. Uh, Superintendent Poeck, I do believe Mr. Rodriguez is on as well and I would love to hear this, him as the parent and his perspective. Thank you, Ms. Sandejo. Yes, Thank sir. Ms. Sandejo, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, sir. 
Yes, no, first, let me start by again, welcoming everyone and thank you for joining this evening, this evening. Dr. Quake, thank you to you and your staff for facilitating this. You know, this this new, this this is a new uh, technological um, endeavor that we're that moving forward with our Facebook Live here. So thank you very, very much for, for creating this platform for us and our community. Uh, from a board perspective, yes, we remain uh, extremely committed to the safety of our students and our staff and our broader community. We will be steadfast in our approach. And Dr. Puig took the words right out of my mouth. We're being very measured, very methodical with every with every approach that uh, Dr. Puig has taken along with his staff to ensure the best possible measures are being taken to ensure the safety of our kids, our staff, and, and of course our broader community. As a parent, uh, yes, I initially had those, those reservations about sending my boys on campus. And I had a, a tremendous amount of questions about what the district was gonna do uh, to make sure that they kept my, my kids safe. So uh, uh, I'm happy to, to report that I, as a parent, certainly my kids as well, uh, feel extremely, after going back on campus now for a couple of weeks, uh, they feel extremely safe. They feel that they're, uh, that they're being watched over and cared about. And, and they come back and tell me that, yes, dad, we're, we're following all the protocols. Yes, dad, we're, you know, they're taking all the proper precautions to take care of us. And now that we've expanded the testing to uh, our, our West Campus High School and all of our middle schools, that's just another layer of confidence that I have as a parent, certainly as a board member, that uh, are the steps that we're taking to ensure uh, that we're that we're keeping safety paramount, even even if that pandemic did not exist. We we as a board and uh, the team of eight, along with the entire staff, are steadfast in our approach, and, and we are just committed to the safety of our our staff, our students, and our community. So, thank you very much for being patient with us. Thank you very much for affording us the opportunity to and entrusting us with the safety of your child, and we will continue to take that very seriously and uh, good things are coming. So thank you very much for, the, for that. Thank you, Dr. Puig. Thank you, President Rodriguez. Uh, Mrs. You know, Ms. Sedvion, you were on a call with AFT and I know you had some good conversation around our responses to the COVID situation. Jenny, if you don't mind, we'll hang on this a little bit longer. Sure. Uh, Ms. Sedvion, you wanna weigh in on that a little bit and, and share with our community how that conversation went? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, so we did review uh, several protocols that we have in place and our teachers, our staff have really been awesome in enforcing, uh, you know, that protocol and our students have been just as awesome because they have uh, assimilated into their new environment, wearing those masks, the social distancing, everything we ask of them, they have uh, complied and even come up with ideas of their own creatively. So everything has uh, gone, pretty wonderfully, not without some snags in the road, like they're, you know, we're learning, it's it's mobile, things, you know, arise, but it, we've been doing a really good job, especially our teachers and our kids working together. But uh, today we did have a conversation with AFT, which is a union for our teachers here in San Antonio, and they did uh, elaborate on the fact and thank us, the South San uh, District and family, uh, about the efforts that we've taken towards keeping our students and our staff safe, and that they also work with two other neighboring districts, uh, large districts, much larger than South San, I would say, and that um, they don't see the same results there. They have seen a lot of uh, different uh, spread of COVID within the system, and uh, that they don't have the same uh, protocols and I guess care systems in place for their staff and for their students. So uh, that was really good to hear that, you know, what we're doing is helping our staff, our students, and is keeping them safe. Uh, we know that, you know, we are still changing things, trying to make them better as uh, new situations arise. I know that I, I, I saw a question in our comment box where a parent is asking, can we bring our students back to face-to-face -face instruction? and in January, and then again, that would be communicating uh, with your principal. And we have been also very accommodating for students that uh, require face-to-face -face instruction and parents, you know, that require that type of platform for their students or for their child. So again, 
that would be something that you request through the principals. And we have told our principals to go ahead and customize for individual students. Thank you, Ms. Sedevion. If we can also move to that question, we'll hang on this segment just a little bit longer, Jenny. Uh, Elsa De La Cruz had a question about elementary schools and uh, testing being available like middle and high schools. Now we know from the data, if we study at that particular group, the secondary age level, uh, a little more uh, problematic in terms of the virus. So the emphasis has been on taking care of them. Uh, we certainly are exploring the opportunity to expand elementary as we are able. Uh, our partners, uh, I would probably venture to say they'd be open to that. Mrs. Sandejo, you wanna weigh in on that a little bit, ma'am? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we definitely have had conversations about that opportunity there. Uh, Clearly, at the middle school level, at the high school level, there is a high uh, mobility rate as far as uh, extracurricular activities. Therefore, the priority uh, was really there. The data indicated that as well. Uh, we have received such positive, uh, just welcome to the testing now at the middle school. And the process is it truly uh, in place within our district that it would allow us that opportunity as well. We certainly will continue uh, communicating with Superintendent Poig and uh, decisions to come and, and getting that communication out to our community and to our parents. And of course, in the best interest of our students and our staff. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Sendejo. Um, if we could move to Toby Eli, he had a comment he wanted to make about him. He was, he's an employee, he says, likewise, uh, I'm also an employee. And I wanna take this a moment to, lit, to lift up Shepard and he makes the point here, Toby, Eli, there we go. Can we get showing up? Not yet. There there. And, you know, Mr. Eli, likewise, you know, he's an employee, but he's lifting up Shepard. So they're doing an amazing job. And, and, and folks, look, we have, we have in this COVID situation, we are far from perfect. And the staff, our custodial staff, our maintenance staff are working tirelessly to disinfect and we are trying very, very hard. So it's important that we take this time to lift people up. And if you disagree, hey, that's okay. Let's re let's disagree respectfully. Nothing wrong with that. But I can assure you that we're giving 110% effort in putting safety of our students and staff first each and every day. And they were working tires tirelessly at this. And so, again, if we can take an opportunity to lift up what they're doing, and if you see a teacher or, or a custodian or a food service worker who puts themselves at risk every day, Take an opportunity to lift him up with us, please. Thank you. Dr. Quig, I wanted to point out yeah. also Crystal Padron, who's also an employee. We do want to thank all of our employees. This is a group effort. This is a team effort. We are a family here. And we are trying to do everything that we can with disinfecting and cleaning and, you know, getting those notices out. And, you know, we all have to do our own part as well. Parents, you know, after school, you know, we need to kind of reinforce to our students how important this is and to our other employees. It's very easy for us to get comfortable that, oh, well, I see this person, but that's part of our part. Like our employees are doing what they can by the, the cleaning and stuff, but um, even our families and myself and all of us here included is to remember to keep our mask on. And just to be clarify right now, we're all in our own office, <laughs> far, far away from everyone. Um, but that is, you know, we're doing what we can, but we also need help. And to instill that in our children, you know, sometimes um, I think they are, but sometimes they don't see the gravity of it. Uh, so if we can just keep on doing that, we're doing our part. We're asking that you partner with us as well. So thank you again, Crystal. Great, great point, uh, Jenny. Thank you. I want to turn to Julie Kampa. She has a question here at 617. Uh, and her question is right there. There we go. Will schools close one up? Okay, will schools close after Christmas break since cases are rising and Texas is a current red zone for COVID? So we are going to continue to monitor the data throughout the break. And again, people first lead with data and we will continue to monitor and adjust and be very nimble and flexible. Whatever word you want to do, we're going to be prepared to go 100% virtual if we need to. Uh, we've ordered several devices. Uh, in addition, Ms. Sebion, you want to talk about the virtual learning piece and equipment that we've recently uh, purchased in addition to what we purchased previously? Yes, sir. So uh, we realize that our kids, our students are using uh, their devices as, at home. And with that being said, we also know some of our devices need to be replaced. Uh, things happen, some of them are slower than others. So recently we uh, purchased a thousand Chromebooks that are already in uh, 
in uh, actually in our possession tomorrow. They're in San Antonio. And we're going to be able to turn those out before we leave for the Christmas break. So students can continue to work. We want to facilitate that. We also have our hotspots that our students are utilizing now. Again, it hasn't been perfect. And the reason it hasn't been perfect is because there are so many people online. There is so much traffic, you know, online that sometimes you'll see a lag, you'll slow down, or sometimes you're completely kicked out. So uh, with that being said, our parents, our students, our teachers have been very patient. And as that has happened, we troubleshoot and we've added more devices. Uh, you know, we've looked at our bandwidth and, and we did some troubleshooting there as well. Um, again, we're trying to get it as close to perfect, perfect as we can, but there'll always be some small, small glitches, but so that you're rest, rest assured, we have additional devices if that is something that our students or our teachers are requiring at this point. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I uh, also want to go to Melissa Mieles. She's right there from Armstrong. And get, I just, again, want to lift up Armstrong and their faculty there. You want to talk a little bit about that one, Ms. Edvion? Yes. Yeah, so I see here that um, Melissa is saying, yes, Armstrong is doing an awesome job. And I would concur. Armstrong is doing an awesome job. All our campuses are doing an awesome job. Uh, I work in there. I walk in onto the campuses. They never know when I'm going, uh, so uh, you never know where you're going to find me. Uh, and I'll walk on to any campus. They're following the safety protocols. I have to sign in. I get temperature checked every time I walk in, and then I have clearance to, you know, get in there. Uh, so the protocols apply to us all. And as an employee of the district and also just as a parent, I am very cognizant of the fact that I have to take personal responsibility for what I'm doing too. You know, I need to keep that mask on. I'll use the hand sanitizer, you know, as soon as I walk into the car and I see our kids, you know, already like they've assimilated to that. They've learned that it's become just second nature for them. And I see our teachers and when our kids forget, it's like a really good, I love the way the teachers uh, redirect and remind them. And we also have signage all over the campus, you know, with constant reminders on how to wear your mask. Don't forget to wash your hands. You know, make sure that you have your mask on. Uh, our kids are walking around with plexiglass dividers. So when they're in the cafeteria, they put their plexiglass divider up or if they're in small groups and they, they're ready to go. If they take off their mask, they have that plexiglass divider. So uh, it's been really awesome to watch. Thank you, Ms. Edvion. And again, a lot of parents are chiming in here. Uh, Crystal Huerta wants to give a thumbs up there to Kazen. Um, there she goes. Um, very good. Thank and you, Ms. Huerta. You know, we have one parent that's asking about wanting to do hands-on. I saw that up there. Hands-on activities. Sandra Melchor. I don't know. If I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Melchor, yes. Melchor. Yes. And so they're going to be start again. We're looking, we are looking at everything possible. We always want to make sure those safety protocols in place, but yes, we are getting there as well. Okay. Um, I want to turn to base man, base man. Uh, don't know your name, but you said your name is base man at six twenty. left a long note here. Uh, can we click on base man real quick and let's respond to that. Uh, the slogan of school teacher, okay, superintendents, our children are precious resource. Yes, our children are our most precious resource. And this is a perfect example where someone might disagree with us on something. Uh, this individual here says, hey, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't be playing football. Kids should be at home. And that's okay that we disagree on this. But again, the point we want to emphasize tonight is we are focused, again, on putting safety first, balancing that with the need for parents that want their child in an in-person environment. And when we do that, again, as we've heard here in the last 24 minutes, making sure that we have the safety procedures in place to ensure that we strike that balance between education and safety. And again, I can't underscore enough the great job the team has done. And from the bottom, the superintendents at the bottom, all the way to the top with our teachers and parents. And uh, it, it's amazing. It's inspiring. Mr. Rodriguez, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Boyd, because I was actually having some thoughts on that. And yes, it's absolutely uh, healthy uh, to disagree with, with anyone's approach or opinion, as long as, like Dr. Boyd said, we do it respectfully. 
I just want to touch on the comment regarding the sports and the athletics. You know, I have I have two boys that participate in athletics as well. And, and as a parent, certainly their mother had concerns as well. But that's why we we prioritize, like Ms. Sudeva mentioned, the, the testing for those that are involved in those extra type, extracurricular type activities, along with the coaching staffs as well. There has been instances where we've had to cancel a couple of games be, as a result of that. But uh, but I feel I feel confident, and certainly my 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 own boys feel confident now that we're we have that extra layer uh, of testing that is happening on site, uh, you know, on a weekly basis. Uh, it's certainly helping us in that endeavor. And you know, it's it's not as a parent, it's not the most ideal situation. And I know that's not what we want for our kids. Certainly for for our our seniors, my my heartfelt uh, just my sincerest thoughts with our seniors. You know, we're trying to do every everything that we possibly can to salvage some 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 of their senior year and all those related activities while keeping safety at the forefront. And you know, like Dr. Puig says, certainly Ms. Anejo and, and, and everyone here tonight, we're not gonna be perfect, uh, but we are taking it as seriously as we possibly can. So, and we're gonna continue to do so relentlessly. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Well said, and my lights turned off for some reason. Here. Um, so I'll turn that on in a minute. But before I do, and I did wanna mention Adicelli Garcia, she mentioned our cafeteria ladies. Um, I do really want to lift them up. They are, thank you, Carlos. <laughs> I do really want to lift them up because even when we were all remote, they were coming in to serve our families. Um, they are still doing both, serving are those curbside meals, the cafeteria, they're here early hours, early, late, and we just really want to put a shout out to them and, and we appreciate you and we thank you. Thank you. You know, Ms. Collier, I want to jump to one more too up here at 623. It's Karen Ann Wan. And um, she, Karen Ann, wanted to make a point here that Madela is doing an awesome job. And then this is where both my grandbabies go to school and they're so excited to be face to face at school. So you see, um, we're, we're all over the gamut with where we want to be with our child, whether it's in home or in person. But here's the here is the common theme. We are all unified around safety being our number one priority as evident tonight. And again, we're not we're not pursuing perfection, but we are pursuing excellence with respect to safety. And, and and please, you know, give us the patience and grace and feedback when you see something that we can improve on. We're we're just trying to get better than we were ten minutes ago. Okay, so we're all in this mode of continuous improvement. So we've talked a lot about COVID. I know I hung there a little longer than everybody <laughs> wanted tonight. But that's okay. It's just this is a conversation night. We, you know, we were preparing for this. We wanted to envision that we're all together around a fire pit with marshmallows, just marshmallows, <laughs> and 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 just having a good, honest, authentic conversation. That was the point tonight. So we had to jump jump into the COVID situation a little bit. And I'm glad we did. Now, I do want to give an update <laughs> on the academic piece. We heard some good news from the state today, and uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna first ask the uh, uh, chief academic officer to talk about how that impacts our core business today. What did we hear? And then I'm going to pivot over to our board president. I want to get his perspective, both as a board president, and as a parent. So Ms. Sedvion. Well, today we uh, got news from TEA that our A through F accountability system is going to be different this year. And it is because we're in the middle of a pandemic and they're taking into consideration that our kids, um, are having to, again, uh, go through many things mentally, emotionally, physically, and our teachers are teaching different and our students are learning differently. So now we will have STAR testing, but this will be more diagnostic in nature. Uh, basically, we want to see where our students are, are at, how much they have learned and what they have been able to grow in and retain and also use that information so that we can turn around and we can use that in the classroom to support them. We know with uh, with COVID-19 uh, since last March, you know, kids have really haven't been in school consistently. And so that in itself is something that we're looking at and we're seeing how that is impacting our students' instruction. That is why that strong remote learning component is essential. And uh, having that asynchronous instruction, you know, our lessons that we post online and having our students come in and view those lessons and complete assignments is very, very important. 
something we some things that we are doing for kids that are not here face to face to ensure that they are mastering uh, their their goals and their objectives for the year is that we're also providing support for them on Saturday so they can come in, we can touch base with them, and we can help them with that. So I in in short. Uh, you know, this test, these results will be used to drive instruction for our students and to prepare them better. So, and if there are any educational gaps, academic gaps, that's what we're going to target. Certainly good news. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Ms. Edvion. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, what are your thoughts? Yes, sir. No, well well said, Ms. Edvion. Certainly, I, I, I did get the news today when, when TEA put that news release out regarding our a through F accountability ratings, and, and it only makes sense, right? I think all of us who, uh, you know, when we get up and we and we we go and do what we signed up to do, which is put our kids in positions to be successful, you know, it's it it was it was the common sense thing to do. I'm I'm glad that uh, that that's going to be so. Uh, related to tar to to the star test, I know that there, there's a lot of conversation centered around whether we should and we shouldn't. But just knowing that, just like I said, everyone pointed out, it's going to be more diagnostic in nature, kind of, you know, and and and, and it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to to identify those gaps, to, to identify what we could have done better as a school district, what our teachers could have done better, certainly what our parents, because it's it truly is a partnership. I know that I have responsibility as a parent to do everything that I possibly can, and not every situation is unique. I, I wholeheartedly understand that, so that's why you know, getting that data will help us identify those pain points, if you will, where we can, you know, coach up on it and get better on and provide a better uh, academic learning environment, more resources that will get a real targeted game plan on, on how to how to bridge those gaps. So we're better for it down the road. So uh, definitely excited about that as a board member and as a parent. So I'm glad that 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 news was put out today. Thank you. I also wanted to add, um, you know, there is some, there are some that are struggling with this. So we just recently, our care zone, I want to encourage parents to reach out, grandparents. We have help not only for our students, because we know that not all of us are always technologically advanced. So we have that care zone help. We're going to start a course there. But I mean, you can call at any time that our care zone for that extra help, whether it's for your student, you, and it's like even with, and I don't know about y'all, but parents there, the way we teach math is so different from what we did back in the day that it's even hard for me to help my child. So we have that there for you. We're, we're providing all these resources. And if, and if you feel we need more, that's what tonight is all about. We want to give you and your children the tools. And, you know, we were the first to bring the care zone and just, we have some partners there. We hope to add more, anything to keep our, kids on that, you know, that path for success. Ms. Collier, thank you for that point. Let's let's hang on the start testing for just a bit more since we have a few questions I think that are important for parents to to get answered. And I want to I want to jump to uh, Veronica Cardenas at 631. Well, can we see hers? And Ms. Edvion, you want to respond to that one, ma'am? OK, so will start testing have to be in person currently? Uh, TEA has indicated that it does have to be in person because we want to maintain the integrity of the test, the security of the test. Uh, if that is what we are going to do in the spring and it's going to impact your child, I'm sure we will come up with a schedule where your child will come in and that will be the time that they are allotted. If there is a problem with that time, then we will work with you as well. But currently, yes, the only way to test is in person. Thank you, Ms. Edvion. And just philosophically, so you understand the diff, uh, you know, where the district is going and, and how it might be different from other other institutions in the area and, and and other districts, real specifically, I'll say. You know, we believe here that students succeed through learning, not through testing. Students succeed through learning, not through testing. When kids have the opportunity to learn at a very high level in a very creative and engaging way, the test takes care of itself. We do not want to be an institution where the sole focus is on testing, testing. Te I mean, if that's what you like, hey, knock yourself out. I have yet to see a college professor ask a student, what did you get on your star test? I, I haven't seen that happen. I haven't heard that happening. So our goal is to learn 
and to keep pushing this climate of deep learning, collaborative learning, giving kids the requisite skills to go out and think well, speak well, and present themselves well, and think in a way that is different from anyone else. And so we do not want to confine them to focus solely on testing. Yes, do we have to play the testing game? Yes. We just do not want to worship at the altar of state testing. We'll take care of it and we'll do a good job when we take care of just good instruction every day. So just want to put that out there. Any comments on that from the team? Well, the, there is another question um, from Felicia A. Trout. Uh, will students that are, are remote learning and remote learning uh, also take the STAR test? And yes, it will be for all students. So that's where the schedule, you know, when that the when the child will come on campus to take the test would be we would advise the parents of that way ahead of time. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't pick up a, a thank you, Miss Sedvion. Uh, there is a Miss Mrs. Alderete at 635. This really speaks to our special needs. And I think it's important as parents whose child is virtual with learning disabilities. The district has been great. There are avenues if needed for help and is only a phone call or email away. So thank you, Special Ed, for what you're doing. This has been an incredibly challenging environment to say the least with respect to our children with disabilities. So I wanna lift up our Special Ed Department and all the efforts they're making. Are there any other questions there around testing we wanna to jump to before we get into? Let's see, let's see. I believe, let's see, we've got a lot of love, actually. Everyone's saying that we're doing a great job, that they they, they appreciate what we're doing. So thank you very much. And hey, well, let me, you know, let me, let me, I, I'd be remiss again. It's my favorite quote tonight. I'd be remiss. I'd be remiss. Let me be remiss again. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Baseman. Will you bring Baseman on at three? He he wants to make a point. I, I'd be, again, uh, disingenuous if I didn't bring Baseman back. Says, thanks, guys, for responding to my message. Nothing against you guys. My kids love the school. I love the school. Uh, this is awesome. Base man, you're not being rebellious. You're just being honest and authentic. That's okay. We we honor that. We love you, base man. And we're gonna take care of your kids, I promise. And and, and yes, if sir. I may, Dr. Quigg, that that's the whole point of this. Let's have that that conversation. Let's engage and what what do you see that we're doing well? What do you see that we're not doing well? And let's have a conversation to come up with a plan where we can all get on the same page because at the end of the day, we want all of our kids to be successful. We do. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. And you know, we're on this academic theme. So uh, I do want to double click on Marcela Villegas Garcia at 637. This is important community. You understand some great things are happening here in South San. Great thing. So you look at uh, that quote there. You want to read that? Uh, anyone there want to read that? That's pretty cool. Yes. Congratulations to Zamora Middle School for being recognized as a pace setter school. This sets them on track to becoming a gold ribbon school. Now let me let me put that in perspective for you. There is an organization, nonprofit called Children at Risk. Children at Risk, that group is the original A through F folks. They've been given A through F grades for the last decade to every district and campus, all 8,000 campuses in the state of Texas. So they assign A through Fs based on their methodology, but they look at kids that are academically fragile, children at risk, and they recognize those schools that are performing exceptionally well and making progress with those academically fragile kids. And Zamora has done a great job and they were just recognized last week as a pace setting school. So again, um, way to go, Mr. Malden and your staff of teachers and, and educators and just everyone there loving on the kids and making learning the focus. Great job. Awesome. So okay. Quick, we're at 640. So you said no. I had to <laughs> rain us in. So uh, we go to the TE update. <laughs> it's time for us to move on to um, what you like to call our visioning strategy. All right, that was, well, we're just having a good authentic. You know, you just you just poured wire of uh, water on the fire pit, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one time where I feel like I'm in control. Remember, I I'm organizing this. So. <laughs> Sir, let's you, move you, on. <laughs> you sound like my wife at home. My wife says at home, you're not the superintendent of the house. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I'm not on the, I guess I'm not on this call either. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so really, why are we here tonight? And the original focus was really to get us to think about what kind of future do we want to create for our community? And again, this is the purpose tonight. Here's the primary objective. Can we rise to the occasion 
for our children. And that is the occasion is the opportunity for us to create a very vivid and dramatic future for these kids that deserve it. We know South San has had some great things happen here over the years. I mean, you talk about the state championships in baseball, they won decades, 70s and 80s. And there's been a number of, you know, basketball championships and academic accolades. And we've we've seen some ups and downs, right? And so in the next few minutes, with the balance of the time, the 19 minutes we have with us, and we'll see if it's soccer and we go an extra time, we'll see how it's going. But with the balance of time, we want to talk about, you know, uh, where we've been, where have we been, so that can help us define where we want to go and talk about where we are now and, you know, why us? And then where do we want to go? What are your deepest aspirations for the children that we serve? This is exciting, people. I, good people, this is, this is why we get up every day and serve, is to create new opportunities, to partner with our community, to make this district as spectacular as it can be. And it's going to take a lot of effort. Mr. Rodriguez and I talk all the time. Mr. Rodriguez, it's not going to be easy, is it, sir? <laughs> and well, sir, we certainly welcome, welcome the opportunities that we have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we do. So with that setup, again, that's the primary objective. Let's understand that tonight. You know, let's, let's rise to the occasion. Let's lift up our district and think, how can we really set ourselves apart from everyone else so these children can go off into the world and take care of us someday when we're old? My wife already says I'm old, but, you know, when, when we're old. So that being said, this is going to be some honest conversation, Mr. Rodriguez. Are you ready, sir? Here we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir I am. Okay. So kind of what are your perceptions about as a district? Where have we been as a district? What are your perceptions? Just, 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 you know. Yes, sir. I, I think that, oh, I know. Not, I think I know that we have, I've seen it and experienced it firsthand. We have phenomenal kids. We have phenomenal teachers. We have phenomenal administrators. We have a very committed loyal, supportive community. And I think historically, we just haven't been challenged enough. We haven't challenged ourselves enough. We haven't made ourselves vulnerable enough to say, you know what? We need to be innovative. We need to be creative. We need to go out and pursue uh, more challenging opportunities. What it, because we all know, and I'm not gonna date myself here, but the opportunities that existed then when we were in school are 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 nowhere near the choices and the opportunities that are that exist today, and we have a responsibility as a school district with with parents and and guardians that are entrusting us with the education of their child, their public education of their child, to be competitive, to be relentless in providing that choice and putting our kids in the most in the in the best possible situation to be successful. And like Dr. Prig said, to go out into the world and let, and you know, we, you, my favorite word the entire time that Dr. Prig has been here is let's unleash, let's unleash the talent <laughs> our kids have that we know it's there because I've seen it. I think we've all seen it. So let's unleash that talent that our kids have and let's unleash our teachers to help them guide them down the road. And I'll tell you, when I came on board, I said that we are going to fight for our identity and we are going to pursue that relentlessly. And while I, well, it's my watch, at some point it won't be my watch. While it's my watch, we are going to do that because it's why we get up every day for our kids. Wow. Wow. Um, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. I love the passion and the truth to which he spoke. I want to ask the group, you know, Mr. Rodriguez said, maybe we haven't challenged ourselves enough in the right way. Does anyone want to weigh in on that from the group or do we have any comments? What do you all think? We're getting some comments about um, dual language and bilingual students. Okay. So I thought maybe we discussed that. We actually just this year, and I'm going to let Ms. Servignon take over in just a bit, uh, started our dual language program. Oh. And yeah. Ms. Servignon, you want to go on with that? Yeah, so uh, this year we did start our dual language program. So even our students that are not Spanish speakers, are learning to speak Spanish, and are intermingled with students that uh, their first language is Spanish that are learning the English language. Uh, the program has been really good for our kids. It's been a different than we thought it was going to be because of the virtual uh, setting. 
But in looking at our growing uh, student population and looking at our growing bilingual population, most importantly, and knowing that we want our students to be global citizens, we want them to be successful in English and in Spanish. And for, you know, like tonight's meeting, uh, you know, I hear Mrs. Sendejo speak Spanish. I understand everything she says and I can speak Spanish, but not like that. So I wish I had, had that opportunity, you know, growing up where I would have been able to, you know, go from English to Spanish to French to Mandarin, you know, and those are the opportunities that we're opening up for our kids. As far as the support for our bilingual students, we have been uh, really looking at that specifically for our recent immigrants and looking at different sheltered situations or classroom settings that will support our students' linguistic transition. So uh, more will be coming in that, in the, uh, for those students in the future. Sorry, and I'll sorry. add this, thank you, Ms. Edmion. Let me add this to that point. Again, it's, it's not even just bilingual. What about trilingual? We gotta think that mm -hmm. big. You know, We want our kids to not just learn Spanish and English, but what about Mandarin? That's gonna be the next mm -hmm. language of commerce. So. That's on the horizon. That's how big we need to think. I want to turn to Mr. Guevara at 643 and his vision. You want to put that up there and, and someone from our team read that? Jen, you want to read that, ma'am, at 643? Yeah. Carlos, can you bring that up? Okay. My vision is to have every child in the South San ISD have the same opportunities that every child in the state of Texas has. And I do, I really like that vision. And I, when we were discussing how we were going to lay out this platform, one of the things that I wanted to touch on you don't mind me answering Dr. Puig since I read it, <laughs> is that I want the parents here tonight and anytime, if you hear of a program over here on the north side, over here in Alamo Heights or something, tell us about it because I believe that every child here at South San ISD should have the opportunity and, and grasp every program in the, within their grasp is what I meant to any other program that anyone else has in their backyard. We want to provide that for you and we have to know about it. Like I mentioned here earlier, fencing has um, so many untapped uh, scholarships. Maybe we should add fencing. Parents, would you be interested in that? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like anything that you don't worry about crazy ideas. We want to give our child every, our children, every opportunity. So bring it on, bring the ideas on. Mrs. Collier, I want to add to what you just shared because five days into Superintendent uh, Poig joining our district, June 11th, Superintendent Poig, I remember, you came in and we were all together with our principals, every single leader, the CEOs of our campuses, as you like to speak to them and share that that's what they are. You mentioned, and I wanted to point out, Mr. Munguia um, asks about beyond state standards and some of those measures. When you went through the process of becoming our superintendent, you invested so much time within our district and about our district. You're talking years and years. You uh, can actually quote sets of data from 50 years ago, and that is phenomenal. And with that vision, alongside with what Mr. Rodriguez mentioned, the challenge behind that, Mr. Guevara's comment, it is definitely set up towards that path to meet those state standards, go beyond that, ensure that our students are prepared like Mrs. Cerveon is mentioning every single day. And most importantly, it's going to take that collective vision. You hear um, President Rodriguez, every time we have a board meeting uh, and that message that comes behind his heart, within his heart, because on his watch, He's going to continue to support that. You hear Mrs. Alderete uh, share that passion, Mr. Flores. It just, it continues to grow and uh, it becomes just contagious and uh, very appreciative of that. And, and we know that this is one of many of that vision. And, and we see you carry that three-year playbook all yeah. over the place and we value that sir so looking forward to many more table talks <laughs> well let's let thank you mrs and let's put mr munguia's question up again i want to i want to double click on that real quick you know mr munguia asked a very profound question what will be measures of success beyond state standards so mr munguia the district needs to produce national merit scholars one, 
The district needs to produce IB graduates too. The district needs to have measures down at the earliest learners to ensure when every child is in third grade, they are reading at or above grade level. Es todo. That sets them on a new path, a new future beyond state standards. So that means we have to fix at the most foundational system level, our literacy program, our phonics program, our guided reading and wrap around a real dedicated, focused, non-evaluative coaching process to ensure we're learning and growing as educators, all of us, from the bottom, the superintendent at the bottom, the board and superintendent at the bottom, all the way to the top where our, our youngest learners and teachers are engaged every day. That's how we're going to go beyond the state standards. And it's gonna take a lot of systemic work. You know, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, we were here yesterday talking about systems and we showed some arrows and we had a good conversation. You wanna to speak to that a little bit, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, certainly, you're, everybody's hitting the nail on the head here. And it's certainly a question that I asked uh, when my watch came up in November of 2018 is, you know, how do we, and I'll just be blunt because, you know, that we have the community that's listening here. How do we go beyond being mediocre? How do we go beyond settling for beating, for settling for mediocrity? That's not my style. That's not how I certainly, I, I have parent for my own kids. And that's not certainly the vision. That's not, that's, that's not what we're here to do. So great question by Mr. Mogia. Great question by, by, by a uh, great response by Dr. Puig and going back to our board operating procedures you know, it's all about those arrows, like getting them all, you know, sometimes it's going to be one at a time, one step at a time. And, it, and it's going to certainly take a lot of work and getting all those arrows pointed in the right direction. And certainly Dr. Puig being his 189th day on the job, has, you know, uh, done a tremendous job to this point, has far exceeded my, I'm just one board member, one parent has far exceeded my expectations because we challenged him during his, during his interview process. And I, I challenge them individually, say, we don't have time, nor our kids have time to just stop. We need you to come in, hit the ground running. We need to pass that baton on, certainly with the momentum that Miss Sandejo had started as the as our interim, and keep going because our kids don't deserve any less. And if it takes us working round the clock, because you know, I have a full-time job, but this is my second unpaid full-time job. And that's how vested I am and how passionate I am. And I hope that that filter, filters on down through Dr. Puig and his staff to let's rise up to the occasion. Let's identify all those systems. Let's identify all the data and the metrics and how we're gonna measure our successes beyond the state standards, beyond the state test. Because I'll tell you, when I came in here and I looked at our district goals and we're not even shooting for state standards, I have, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because I have kids in the classroom. If you're just, no, we need we need to change that. We are changing that, and we're going to far exceed anyone's expectations that ever had has talked about expectations here at South Santa ISD. So I look forward to doing my part in support of Dr. Puig and his staff, and certainly I can speak on behalf of our other board members uh, that we we are up to the task. So I look forward to it. There's th thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, there's some really good questions. I I really want us to get to. Uh, there's one point that I do want to clarify, and it's a board policy matter. Mr. Rodriguez, I'm going to help you with this one. Would you go to John Ramos at 643? John Ramos at 643. And he has a real simple, simple statement that I want to address. Can I click on it or no? No. Oh, well, yeah. I'm getting right up there. Hold on. 643. You, you getting there before this program's over? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all funny games. Still something gets hurt. <laughs> You said you were running the show. Uh, I know. Hold on. Carlos, help me out. Uh, 643, John Ramos. I hope you're holding tight, John Ramos. Uh, Mr. There Ramos. Bring okay. back the paddle. Oh, yeah, will you put that up, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Mr. Ramos, we've got a paddle. And um, <laughs> we just can't bring it back, though, because in board <laughs> policy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank Oliver, FO board policy. The board prohibits the use of the paddle. I do have one here if you need it for home. Just call me. <laughs> All right. A little, a little levity there. Just a little levity. Okay. So, uh, we, we have just about 300 seconds left. And I want to jump into the second segment uh, about, you know, why us? 
But before we do that, it's important that uh, Mr. Roland Balzadua, Balzadua at 645, had a very, very good question. Miss Sedvion, you want to weigh in on Roland at 645? I see it. Sharing school. Okay, let me read it aloud. That way I can. Yeah. How will the district be sharing high school academic programs and option for current eighth grade eighth graders? And so both in and out of school. So this is a great, great question because yeah. we've been working on uh, our middle school offerings or high school offerings and actually how we're going to get those choice cards out to students. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create some online informational videos for parents and for students so that you can go back and refer to at whatever time you have to uh, log in. And then we are going to go ahead and have our advisors, our counselors ready to go for individual online sessions. So we will be doing these in the evening and then we will be scheduling appointments with parents and students that need additional information. Uh, we will be doing a lot of our choices online as well through an online platform. And all of that is going to start uh, being rolled out in January, starting with our informational videos. Again, I mean, you can always set an appointment. We will send you a link and we can meet with you virtually if you want to come in for a face-to-face -face meeting with one of our counselors, one of our administrators. That is something we can do. We just have to follow our safety protocols. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Sevillon. Let's jump to another question here. Again, we're talking about big ideas right now. Here's a great idea from Lynn and Marie at 648. Can we see that one up there? I and just let's popped it up. And Carlos and I are fighting for control here. There. You and Carlos, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you can take in consideration on a sign language program, that is a great idea. Did you have you had some in your previous districts, Miss Sedevion? I have. I, I, yeah. I. It's fantastic. You want to speak to it a little bit? Yes. Yeah, so we did have a sign language program uh, for staff as well as students. That was one of our notes, our language other than English uh, courses that we could give credit for. So it is a it is a great idea. And just let me tell you, because I took the course, it is a difficult course. Yes. Uh, but it is also uh, very beneficial uh, to utilize. And then you can use it and people won't know what you're saying. You know, maybe just do another course in science. So there you go. But uh, yes, it's a, it's a really great course. It is. It's a great opportunity. If we can build that program. Uh, I think that's the kind of ideas we want to hear about. Again, we're running down to about 120 seconds or so. Let's take it over to uh, Sarah Cuellar Garvan. She has a great suggestion at 653. Want to see that there? Want to read that one, Jenny Collier? I got it. I got it. Here we go. Okay. Suggestion would be to see if South Sand can partner with SAC on the dance program that they currently have. This gives our students an early opportunity to start college within a potential career. Ms. Sauvignon, I think you're gonna have to answer that one as well. <laughs> so we are expanding our partnerships right now. We are looking into expanding our partnerships and our opportunities for our students. I know that uh, we do have programs that we go through with Palo Alto. We're also now looking at A&M here in San Antonio uh, to create other opportunities for our students. One thing that I can tell you is that we are we are starting our P-TECH Academy next year. You probably already heard about that. And that would be also an associate that our students would be able to receive. And that starts at Palo Alto, goes on into A&M. Another thing that we will be starting next year is our teaching and learning 60 hour associates program. Uh, we will be housing that at West Campus, but it's available for all our students. Uh, we have been strengthening our fine arts program and our fine arts offerings since you were talking about dance. And that is something that we're also exploring. So as you look at the offerings at Shepherd, you will notice now we have advanced dance. Uh, we have dance one, two, and three. And then we have the course that uh, continues that program at West Campus. So we're currently looking at expanding that as well. So that's a great suggestion. 
It is a great suggestion. I want to turn to Jose Rodriguez at 659. Can you put his up there? It says, thank you for ignoring my question. Will you go to that? Okay. It says, thank you for ignoring my question because it doesn't fit your narrative tonight. Mr. Puig, will you be addressing questions at a later date? Well, we are not a audience. Good people. We love you. We've been flooded with questions tonight. We're trying to get, I can assure you we're not ignoring. That's not the way I operate personally. I can assure you that's not the way this team operates. So I apologize. We didn't get to any other questions tonight. If if, if this individual, Mr. Rodriguez, I'm sorry, we, we weren't ignoring you, uh, but let's address it since we found it and pulled it up here. Mental health is crucial. And the district is committed to mental health services by evidence of our care zone. Mrs. Sandejo was inter just instrumental in getting that going. Mrs. Sandejo, you wanna to speak to that a little bit? Yes, sir, uh, Superintendent Poy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, for your, your question. And uh, Ms. Cerveon mentioned earlier today, and we did, we had such a great uh, conversation with our AFT uh, union about specifically that. Uh, we know that that has been a major awareness. We do have a particular process in place uh, so that our care zone can provide self-care support to our teachers. That is a, a continuum. We have principals that are reaching out to our care zone to ensure that we do come into our campuses and have these conversations, whether they are uh, independent one-on-one, -on -one, uh, virtually, and or in groups. It is a consistency that we continue to provide. In addition to that, we are bringing the awareness, as you heard Mrs. Collier earlier today, mentioned uh, those specific uh, resources that we have available for students, for staff, and our community. So we welcome and we will take some next steps, measures as far as enhancing the communication with regards to the care zone resources that we have, the wraparound services, lifting every CEO of every entity that is part of this wraparound service. And just to top it off, the staff that continues to communicate amongst one another. I hope that helps, Mr. Rodriguez. As a matter of fact, I would like to lift Mr. Pacheco as he is one that has been such a key advocate for our teachers as well. And we are going to collaborate to get some of this information out on a daily basis out to our staff and our community and uh, Mrs. Collier along that district communication as well. This includes our substitute teachers as well. They are part of our family. They're a part of our community. Uh, they, they live here with us and we want to be able to provide that service. Well said, Mrs. Sandejo, thank you so much. And to if, if Mr. Jose Rodriguez is still listening, please send us your information, reach out to us via email or phone. Uh, we're on the, uh, on the website there. And, and if you need services now, let's, let's take care of it. We're, we're here to help and support and take care of one another as a family. Just really quick, I want to hang on two more points. I can double click on uh, Syl Bernal at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m., the next one there. Let me see. Um, there we go. I got it. Are you okay? All right. Uh, <laughs> you want to read that out loud, young lady? What do you have available for gifted and talented children? So, you with this for the next couple of days. I'm just going to warn you guys right now. <laughs> I'm glad this was brought up because often we forget about our gifted and challenged kiddos. You know, we 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 put a lot of emphasis on um, the academically fragile kids, as we should. We put a lot of emphasis on um, a lot of the different spectrum of children because they they're all academically fragile all of them and we need to take care of all of them. Sometimes we forget about the gifted and talented. Yeah, they'll they'll be fine. Eh, they're okay. They'll you know just give them more work, they'll be fine. That's equally a disservice. That is a disservice. Those children need the same level of support as all of the other kiddos on the spectrum. So what are we going to do about it? We are exploring with the school board and with the staff right now the first profoundly gifted and talented school in their county. We are exploring that right now. So stay tuned for more. Do you want to add any, anything to that, uh, Mrs. Tendejo or Ms. Devion, either one of you? No, Ms. Devion there. I'm sorry. It's because I had this live on my phone and it started so loud. <laughs> here. But yes, with our gifted and talented, we're also expanding services for our secondary students. We're really looking at our dual enrollment offerings. We're looking at uh, a core complete program 
for our students and for our students that are actually in our elementary uh, level students, we are looking at seeing how we can strengthen that program by clustering our students and providing them those challenges. For elementary and middle school, we are looking at project-based learning. So kids are now grouped very creatively, more by skill level than just age, so that we are challenging those students. And uh, we know that sometimes they are the forgotten population because we know they're gonna do well, but we don't just want them to do well, we want them to excel. And so we want to make sure that we uh, push them, challenge them. So whenever they leave our doors, you know, they'll be over at Stanford, Harvard, UT Austin. And you know what? They're not going to have, they're going to be academically prepared. They're not going to be those students that are struggling to stay in. As a matter of fact, they're going to be setting the standard. So um, that's what we want to ensure we do for those students that need to be challenged. Thank you, Ms. Sedvion. And I want to thank everyone who's been on this call tonight. We have extended, we're an extra time like soccer. I know we've gone, it was an exciting conversation tonight. I know we wanted to dive more into some big ideas and opportunities. I think we touched a few of them tonight. It's probably going to cause us to have to come back together again and continue this conversation. It's been amazing. I want to lift up our school board and they are the linchpin of this whole thing. They have been visionary and focused on bringing this district together. And I want to thank them for their generosity and support in changing the landscape for South Sand and thinking big. Uh, I want to personally thank uh, Mrs. Sendejo, and I, she gets tired of me thanking her for this, but, you know, she took the district on in a tough time, was in transition, and she brought a, a level of stability and focus that we needed. And I'm just blessed to call her a colleague. I want to thank, uh, you know, Miss uh, Miss Sedvion, you came on in the middle, you know, the summer. I called you and said, hey, we might have an opening. Uh, and guess what I told her? The board's going to interview you too. <laughs> yeah, they did. And they, they were tough on her. Yeah. And so, um, and, and then Miss Collier, thank you for always just being just just who you are and being authentic. And Mr. Rodriguez, I want to give you some just opportunity to say a few things here as we wrap the show up, sir. No, definitely. It's definitely an exciting time uh, to be at and involved with and partnered with South San Antonio Independent School District. And if you, I, I want to ask the community, all those that are watching and all those that are going to go back and replay this live, if you watch any board meeting, watch the one tomorrow. I mean, watch the one next next month on the 16th, our, our December regular meeting and sending the agenda with Dr. Puig the other day. There are tremendous presentations that are coming up, truly visionary things that we're looking at doing. So a lot of questions that were asked tonight about and that are still pending about what we're doing and where we're headed and what we're considering. Watch the board meeting on, on next week, December. We have tremendous presentations from Magnet Programs to a &M San Antonio to p -Tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, you name it, we got it. So I'm, I'm truly excited to have Dr. Puig come in and provide that genuine and, and, and just this overall leadership. And certainly, Mr. Dejo, thank you for, like Dr. Puig said, bringing it, you know, riding the ship where we need it to be righted. I'm truly excited to be part of this team. And I promise you community that I will do my part. I will continue to do my part to support Dr. Puig, support our community, all, all for the greater good of our children. So uh, it's a phenomenal time to be at South San Antonio and Penn School. Thank District. you all. Thank you. I also want to add too, again, if we didn't get to your question, if there's a suggestion you want to add, if you watch this later, one of your friends watches it later, please send us your questions, suggestions, concerns to news at southsandisd.net. And I have a feeling we'll probably have another one of these Facebook Live community meetings very soon. So maybe we'll pick your topic. Thank you all again for joining us. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.